All right, mandolin gloves. Hey, Billy, nine fingers. Uh, Google no cry cut resistant gloves. You can find them on Amazon for around $10. They're basically Kevlar gloves and made to stop exactly what happened to you. You use them with sharp knives while grating foods, shucking oyster, woodworking, you name it. They're food safe and machine washable. I have a pair and I don't mandolin without them. Dude, God bless you. God bless you. No cut, no cry cut resistant gloves. I'm Googling those right now. No cry cut resistant gloves. Da, ba, ba, da, da, da. Oh, look at them. They're kind of stylish, too. Holy shit. They also look a little murderous. So if you have a bad relationship with your wife, I, 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 I wouldn't put these on. Like, she might grab a pistol or something. Like, hey, I'm just, just cutting some radishes. All right, fat jokes. Um... Uh, Okay, fat jokes. Oh, Jesus. Bill, you seem to spend a lot of time telling fat jokes. No, I think you just focus on the fact that I, I tell a lot of jokes. I tell a whole bunch of jokes. I talk about conspiracy. I make fun of banks, oil company. I make fun of fucking Apple. I make fun of uh, fucking people on bicycles. I make fun of people that fucking uh, post shit on Instagram and act like it's deep when it isn't. I make fun of people who don't have a fast car, but have a loud exhaust. Uh, what else? I make fun of people who don't wear masks or listen to doctors. I make fun of myself. I make fun of my wife. I trash women. I make fun of cats. I make fun of the NBA. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things, but let me guess you're a fat fuck. So now you're going to take this personally. Okay, here we go. Bill, you seem to spend a lot of time telling fat jokes i think at this point we all understand that you have no respect for fat people and have even have contempt for them you see how they did she drag or he dragged you all uh this aspect of your brand air quote is tiresome and shows a lack of creativity i hope you move on with your life and create some new actual funny material beyond verbally attacking other human beings (laughs) And what other human beings did you stick up for, you fat fuck? You only talked about yourself. Go eat some more cookies, you cunt. Um, I hate self, you know. You know, actually, that's kind of funny. A self-serving fat person. That's the problem. Um, anyway, maybe you had those T-Rex arms. Uh, no, dude, fuck you. That, that, that you. Look at all the goddamn ginger jokes that are out there. There's literally kick a ginger day. There's not a roll of fat guy down the hill day, is there? Go fuck yourself. I'm orange. <laughs> I have no sympathy for you. I make fun of everything. That's what the fuck I'm supposed to do. All right? So get out of your feels and get over it with a nice big fucking gallon of ice cream. Um, Vietnam helicopter pilot. Uh, hey, Bill, thought you would like the helicopter stories from Vietnam Huey pilot Colonel Matt Jackson on the Jocko podcast episode 275. Oh, my God. I would love to listen to that. Hat in hand. Um, the whole podcast is interesting, but they for a while, uh, I think you meant to say, talk about all different kinds of auto rotations and cool helicopter stuff around the 45 minute mark. Seems like something you would be into. Enjoy and go fuck yourself. P.S. Your father. All right. Cool. Oh, awesome. All right. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right. Here we go. What is the name of that? I thought you enjoyed the helicopter stories from Matt. I think it would have been nice. Oh, the Jocko podcast. Jocko podcast 275, Colonel. Oh, yeah, there we go. The Relentless Danger from the Air in Vietnam with Huey pilot Colonel Matt Jackson. Dude, the fucking, and they were kids when they did it. The balls that they had. The fucking balls. I get, I get nervous that there's a crosswind. <laughs> Tailwind or whatever. All right, woman president. Billy boy, I am a fan of Kenya. And I am a fan of the podcast. Are you from Kenya? Oh, you are from Kenya. That's awesome. Being from Kenya, there is a country to the south of us called Tanzania. 
The country's president has recently died, and by law, the vice president takes over, and she's a lady. Pause giving you a moment to freak out. No, I don't give a shit. There should be there should be just as many women as there's guys. Ideally, that's that's what the fuck there should be. And just I just don't want to listen to the rhetoric that uh, there'll be less war because women are somehow nicer than men. They're not. They're not. It's just men have been oppressing them, so they feel bad. But rather than giving them equal pay, they just throw a bunch of compliments at them. You're strong. You're brave. You're smarter. If you ran the world, there'd be no war. This, they're just filibustering because they don't want to give up their corner office. But it's, it's all a bunch of bullshit. Women are just like men. Okay? It's very difficult to find a good one. Um, after seeing this whole thing unravel, I remembered your, your old bit of if a woman became the president, we'll have the first male first lady. That's right. And he's gone. Sit there and do some first lady shit. Just thought I could share the news with the podcast. I finished up with the old podcasts, which are episodes, apps, 2011 to 2021. I also found a website which has the, the phone podcast, oh, 2007 to 2010, which are fucking awesome, especially those stories of getting drunk during NFL game. Also been listening to all your appearances on Opie and Anthony. Jesus Christ, went through my whole library and you were a into a lot of conspiracy stories. Yeah, I was. I was. I, I, went, I was really... I was new to the internet. <laughs> and that technology. That wasn't... Actually, it wasn't. I was probably on the internet for 10 years. I was just an idiot back then. Um, and I imagine 10 years from now, I'll look back on me now and think that I was a fucking idiot. You know? Who knows? I don't know. I mean, isn't that part of life? You look back five years ago, but I can't believe I fucking said that. I was an idiot, right? And which is why going back in somebody's life to cancel them is fucking stupid because most likely the person you're canceling doesn't exist anymore. Um, am I going down the rabbit hole of all the Bill Burr stuff? Love the comedy, love the podcast, and go fuck yourself. Um, that's pretty cool. All the way over in Kenya. Well, thank you for listening. Um, about the cardio doesn't burn fat guy V shred. Yeah, that guy's shredded. Hey, Billion Burr, I heard you laughing at the guy on the advertisement who repeats over and over that cardio doesn't burn fat and thought it would be relevant to tell you that the guy has been a known fraud in the fitness industry. Really? I mean, he's he's shredded, though. I mean, he's doing something right, isn't he? He preys on the uninformed public hey. by getting ads pushed on Facebook and YouTube and tries being a contrarian to the tried and true fitness advice of diet and exercise to get money for his bogus overpriced supplements and workout plans while being funded and controlled by marketing gurus who are out there to make as much money as humanly possible and not to try getting people in shape. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's basically most business models. I know you've pretty much called BS on the guy, but I just wanted to make sure all of your listeners knew the full story. Thanks, and I love the podcast. But you didn't give any exam. You just what you just put out there was accusations. Uh, okay, uh, a YouTuber, Josh Brett, made a viral video that got the attention from prominent fitness YouTubers exposing V-Shred for their shady business model. Oh, here's the video link below. All right, I'll give you the name of the video. You guys can make up your own mind because I have no idea if, this, if the guy is actually telling the truth and this guy is his competitor and wants to fucking um, discredit him. It's, we need to stop V-Shred. Let's see the comments. Uh Okay, here's some of the comments. I can't seem to escape V Shred's ads on YouTube. That dude can talk for 45 minutes about weight loss and never tell you how to lose weight. Um, I swear fitness community is becoming more and more like the beauty community drama. That's all fascinating. Um, anyway, let's get back to it. Okay, all right. So I'm sorry, the name of it, did I say the name of the video? Or did I not? Where the hell was it? It's, uh, we need to stop V shred. Um, all right. Girlfriend is too religious. Hey, Billy Redskin nutbag. Uh, my name is Carl. I'm a 27 year old guy 
who is starting to become annoyed at my girlfriend's religious behaviors. Um, it doesn't bother me so much that she is Christian, for I also believe in God, prayer, and keeping true to a solid traditional set of moral values. It's just that her life seems to revolve around Christianity and her church. Her entire family is extremely Christian, and all her friends are from the church. Well, Jesus Christ, you didn't notice this from the beginning? Was she acting like she wasn't religious? Um, I mean, the last time she invited me to hang out with them was to a bonfire at the church where we were drinking apple juice and listening to Justin Bieber. Oh, boy. Well, Justin, I don't know. Well, doesn't Justin Bieber, I always get him confused. Justin Timberlake was the first one. Justin Bieber. Well, doesn't he sing about banging chicks? <laughs> That's kind of weird, isn't it? I thought he did, at least when he was younger. Not that he's old now, but now he's, you know, he, he's wise beyond his years considering he made it when he was like 14. So you age in dog years as a fucking celebrity, I would think. Um, anyway, he goes, don't get me wrong. I didn't want to date a crazy, a crazy party, a crazy party going wench. I did want to date a nice, morally responsible girl who is fun to be with, just not with these powerful Christian undertones. She even invited me to go to the bar with her friends the Thursday before Easter. All right. She said she told me they were going to honor the Last Supper by eating some food and by drinking cocktails. I looked at her and I was just thinking, are you fucking serious? I know she has her belief, but is there a good way of telling her to lighten up? At the very least, not to call me out on little stuff like using the Lord's name in vain. That actually pisses me off, especially when she does it around others or give me these long disappointed looks when my sense of humor runs over the topic of Christianity. Uh, well, okay, I'm going to read the rest of this and then I'll give you my opinion here. I like her a lot. I'm just not sure if I can handle that amount of religious energy for the rest of my life, much less have her turn my kids into nutless Christian geeks who go to youth groups every other night. Oh, and how do I convince her that she is an adult? She drives home at 12 at night because she feels that sleeping over might be disrespectful to her parents and unchristian like, even though she will let me plow her 20 minutes before mass. No joke. Uh, oh, Jesus. I've, well, so she's not all bad. Uh, I, I told her that it is a two-way street that you should respect her parents' options, but they should also respect her ability to make her own decisions. You know why they should? Because she is almost fucking 30. Oh. Please give you, me your opinion on the situation. Love you and good luck making another child. That is if Nia is willing to ever couple with you again. <laughs> Um, look, she needs to be dating one of those people that goes to the bonfire and is excited to be there. All right. Um, I don't think it doesn't sound like, I don't know how she started doing the Christian thing, but you said you, you, you know, you like her a lot. Do you love her? Do you love her? You just have to decide like, like you don't have to have any of this conversation with this woman unless you plan on marrying her. Um, and if you plan on marrying and then you got to sit down and just say, listen, if, you know, I stub my toe, I'm going to say, God damn it. Or Jesus Christ, I am. And I don't need a fucking lecture from you. All right. You can stop short of saying, I don't think Jesus is coming back. You can stop short of that. You don't need to be a jerk. You, you know, but like, yeah, she's going to want her kids to be super fucking religious like her. I would think. So I would I would figure that out. But um I I don't I don't think it's a bad thing that somebody's that fucking religious anymore. I just don't. If it works for them and they're not hurting other people, you know, if you know, I don't know. If I was a better person, I would actually go to a church every week just for the reminder to not be a complete piece of shit. I do like that aspect of it. I don't like the intolerance of it. The same way I'm liberal, but I can't listen to these extreme liberal people who cancel people for, for, for having a, a, a fucking, just a thought that was different than theirs. 
So it's, it's like most things, you know, it's a group trying to do this for a good reason. And then it eventually spins out of control. All right. You're 27 years old. You know, maybe you just want, maybe you just get out of this thing. Okay. You don't seem, I got to be honest with you. I don't think you love this person. I think you've hung around with them long enough that you have feelings for them, but I don't think you love them. At no point did you even say that you like this, per- love this person. You just said you like her a lot. Um, but I really think that, you know, look, look, she's three years old and then you, she's, you know, she's an animal in the rack. She's banging you and all this type of shit, right? And you're having a good, you're having a good fucking time. And now you're like, okay, what am I going to do here? And she's like fucking the 700 club. And, you know, that's not where you're at. So I, I, I think I would get out of this if I was, um, if I just, you know, and take this all with a grain of salt, because I don't know you or what's going on, but just the way that was written, I just think, you know, you're having a good time. You guys are banging and whatever. But uh, now when you actually think about taking the next step and getting a little more serious with her, you're like, Jesus Christ, my kids are going to be like fucking reenacting the Last Supper and shit instead of listening to ACDC. That's not what the fuck I'm looking for. You know, if if I'm reading this wrong and you actually really care about this person, you want to marry him, then you need to sit down and talk to him and just say, listen, and you just got to lay it out there. And just say, listen, I'm going to say whatever I want. I'm going to make jokes about whatever I want. And sometimes I'm going to make fun of Christianity. And I'm not going to raise my kids uh, to be a bunch of church-going sissies. All right? You're not turning them into like, they're not, you know. If my kid stubs his toe and goes, oh, what the fuck, Jesus Christ, you know. I, I understand, watch the language, but not, you know. That's out of respect for us. It's not, a, not out, of, out of respect for this guy who said he was coming back and he never did. Okay? So at this point, he's kind of like the absentee father for everybody, isn't he? Am I crazy? You don't have to go that far. You know what I mean. Um, yeah, I would just say, I would say that. And it would make the breakup a lot easier if, if, you just, if you just tell her, like, yeah, listen, I'm, I'm going to have kids, you know, but they're not doing this Jesus shit. So you can fucking forget that. You can forget that all fucking day long. Why can't I plug this fucking thing in? What the fuck am I doing wrong? Sorry. As always, I don't have any fucking time I'm trying to do 50 things at once. That's what I would do. All right, you're 27 years old, man. You know? Go on, get a 25-year-old who never goes to church and have a good time, baby. Do whatever the fuck you want, you know? Or stick with this one. But you got to tell her what's up if you're going to stick with her. That's it, all right? Because you know what? She's doing that for you. She's letting you know what's up. Marry me. Have some Christian kids and stand around a bonfire. I see fire and I see rain. I see sunny days that I thought would never end. But I always thought that I'd see Jesus once again. You know, they're switching up the lyrics. No? I don't know what they do. I've never been to some shit like that. But I can tell you right now, I would be like, uh, are they going to sacrifice a virgin? Like, what the fuck is going on here? I need to get out of here. You know? I don't know. But I'm also an asshole. All right, that's it. I'm calling it right now. The Baylor Bears are going to beat Gonzaga. They're going to beat them. I think UCLA showed people how to beat them. Right? In the first half. Not in the second half. I'd say in the first half. I didn't even watch the second half. In the first half, you just fucking slow it down. They're the Kansas City Chiefs. Everybody's getting lulled into their game. Stop getting lulled into their game. Um, uh, I don't know shit. All right, that's it. Go fuck yourselves. I'll check in on you on Thursday. I have a huge guest, a huge drummer guest on Thursday. I'm teasing it, all right, who has a brand new book out that is so fucking educational and amazing. I'm actually applying the study practices of it to trying to get my instrument rating on my pilot license because it's all the same shit, all right? It, no, not all the same shit. It's just so genius the way he wrote it. All right, that's it. I'll see you guys on Thursday.